My name's Richard, and you are listening to We're Not Wizards. This is a Friends of the Show episode, um, or Frenemies, depending on which way we're going to play it tonight. <laughs> um, and there is somebody who is, um, I've been wanting to speak to for an awful long time, and this is quite exciting. This episode is called When Non-Magic Funny-Shaped Worlds Collide. <laughs> and I know, I know why it's called that, and you will know why it's called that. Because joining me this evening is a gentleman by the name of Andy Lewis. So, hello, Andy. Hello, Richard. Now, How do you, you want? Doing? I'm very, very good. We've been good. talking on and off for some time, and um, we have actually, yeah. And I'm actually, it's, it's really good to get on actually, because we, I mean, you and I've been talking about you either coming on on our, on, on ours yeah. or me coming on yours for, yeah. for months now. So it's actually yeah. nice to actually finally get it done. Yeah, I know. I would be waiting for so long and we've probably got quite... We're just going to kind of talk, just free form, and just kind of see, see what happens. Now, for the people who are listening for the first time at home, the reason that we do this is quite simply because there, there, there are not enough podcasts about board games. I've checked. There's only two. There's us... <laughs> And there's polyhedron collider. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the rest just, just, just don't count. I just I mean, don't they're even... Not worth, they're not worth the effort. I've never really. even seen them. I mean, I've, 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 I mean, I've done an extensive Google search on podcasts about board games and none at all. It's, and it's it, almost like a Google whack <laughs> with two entries. That's what it is. And the other reason, and I think Andy covered it already, is that we're going to do this is quite simply because it was about flipping time that you and me had a good old chat about cardboard, right. to be perfectly honest, because there's been a lot of... There's been a lot of uh, secret DMs uh, through Twitter and kind of back and throws over Twitter and other places on Facebook. And I've been (laughs) gently stalking to the point that um, Steve sent me a message today, Steve Tudor, um, who's the head of Polyhedron Collider. And it was quite simply, you get him for one episode. Uh, And he left left it at that. And then the next message he sent was, cardboard is very heavy isn't it and then that was it so <laughs> I, I don't know whether it's take... steve, steve's got a horrible dark side you don't see it on the podcast you know he, he keeps us in shape so you know we've got to behave ourselves yeah i'm just worried about if he listens this he's going to be pressing the electric shock button and ah, he's next... got a collar on me already that's it i can't go he's you already go... said i've escaped the pen for the evening i think he's going to be chasing me down after <laughs> he this said... he actually said that i've let him escape the pen for the evening i was just like wondering what's going on is this some kind of like you know you're kept in a room and let out to play board games and then you're put back in your room again kind of that's thing. pretty much it it's seriously, seriously there's a keypad on my door i can't get out it's like quarantine <laughs> <laughs> Andy, that's, we're playing board games. Oops. That's that's just so that's just so wrong, but potentially so true. Um, mm. For as I say, I mentioned it already, but for people that aren't aware of where you're from, do you want to explain? Do you want to jump in and explain the good folks at home w- what Polyhedron Collider is? Basically, yeah, know. yeah. Um, it's a I say blog, but it's it's a website. Steve Steve started it. Steve Tudor. Um, five years ago or so, um, because of his sort of major interest in, in in board games. I mean, much like yourself, I think he was just sort of fed up of see or either not seeing um, enough con- good content. Um, and uh, he started up Polyhedron Collider because of that. Um, <clears throat> and it's sort of grown. He's gone to lots and lots of uh, conventions over the years and grown his presence in the industry. Uh, in a very positive way, you know. I mean, he'll go to pretty much every event now, and people will recognise him. They know who he is. Um, well, they'll recognise got... him now because he's been on video. Absolutely, no, I know. I saw. Yes, he uh, snuck out a video without uh, <laughs> without uh, without telling me the other day. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's like that, is it? Is it, is it true? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but um, he's been doing that for I think it's five years. Um, 
And uh, it got to the point, ooh, a little over 12 months ago, he'd been chucking around the idea of a podcast for quite a while. Um, so he approached uh, myself and uh, John, uh, knowing that uh, John had been playing board games, and I'd sort of recently um, got back into them after a bit of a hiatus, which I can sort of talk about later. Yeah. Um, and uh, he said, right, do you, fancy, do you guys fancy it? Because he sort of, he'd, he'd been talking to his wife, Amanda, about it. And um, I think uh, between sort of the, within the friends group, I think it was fairly mutually agreed that uh, between the three of us, because we're quite different personalities, we've got different tastes, that the three of us would probably make uh, quite a good uh, team. And yeah, I'd yeah. like to think we have, because um, we all have uh, different likes, dislikes, personalities. Yeah. I don't stop talking, you know, John's, uh, John's quite <laughs> John, back John, in. Just, John just jumps in and goes, I like Talisman. And, he does, he and then he's off, And then he's off again. He's, and then actually, <laughs> he's been trying to get me to play, actually, the last couple of, the last couple of months. He's had, uh, he's, he's actually gone one to one of his, his friends, who, who I do know, um, and then I think they've come to visit him, and both times I've ended up playing Talisman. He's like, Andy, you up for this? I'm like, well, no, 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 no I, I've mm. broken my leg for the night or something. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, kinda, I always kind of wondered, like, when, when he's not been able to make the episode, if you've not got kind of, like, emergency, John... <laughs> and all it is is just <laughs> it's just of a couple of a couple of like key lines like I like talisman and when can we play talisman I'm sad about talisman I'm happy talisman is potentially getting reprinted <laughs> and you could just mix actually. them into the uh, yeah no I kind of heard that and <laughs> the first thing we I have thought like a was... little sort of a voice board <laughs> like one of those little keyboards yeah. of, of yes, yesteryear yeah, you, you just get, press a button yeah. and it's John's voice you get the ones on your phone that you press kind of thing and you just kind of you know oh there's a board game kind of thing and you just keep pressing the buttons and you just bring them in as they go I must admit when I heard the news that talisman was potentially coming back again there was a part of me that thought, you know, I could just imagine John's face kind of reading this and totally. going, and he's like, he's going from ear to ear. Well, he's got most of, if not all of the uh, the Talisman expansions, as far as I know. As I say, I've not actually played it yet, and I really should, because uh, even 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 my good lady's sort of bullying me into it yeah. and saying, "Well, you can't complain unless you've played it." And no. That's where she's got a point. Yeah. So I do I do intend to play it probably at some point this year. Because uh, I, I should uh, know my enemy and all that. Although I'm, 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 uh, I'm quite proud of the fact that I haven't actually played it. So I'm, I'm, I'm the stubborn side of me is saying no, 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 keep it like that. That way you'll never be exposed to it, and you'll, it'll it'll never ruin your life. But uh, I mean, there are a lot of people out there that like it, so I'm sure it can't be that bad. I mean, are there kind of core? I mean, we'll talk about your your past in a minute, but just off the back of that, are there any kind of big label games? that you kind of are going to admit that you haven't played, that people would go, what? Uh, yes, actually, quite a few. Yes. Um, to my shame, actually. Confession um, time. We'll do one each, okay? But you go first. Okay. <laughs> um, I have never played Lords of Waterdeep. Oh. I know. Ooh, ooh, he says. Isn't that the video that Steve just did? It is. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my I'm, goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be cast out as a leper. <laughs> That's it. That's my that's my PhD career over now. You'll just be known as <laughs> Waterdeep Lewis from now on. That'll be it. And the shit. The worst thing is, I really love um, worker placement. That's what makes it even worse. Oh, that's my my sort of pet genre. I just seen some people playing it the other the other week, and it looked kind of it looked kind of quite interesting. And then I thought, isn't this kind of dungeony? And then I looked over and went, oh, it's actually worker placement. Um, I haven't played. Um, I haven't played Catan. <gasps> really? <laughs> Steve's probably going to love you for that, actually, because he hates it. Um, I haven't played it. I've played the digital version. I've never played it. All right. Did you play it on, on like a tablet or something? I've got it on the phone, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I, I downloaded it, because I've only played it once, and it was, oh, God, it must have been some time early last year, because um, Alora's got it, my, my girlfriend. All right. Um, and she said, right, we're playing Catan, and we played a six-player game. It turns yeah. out I won, huh. um, which was nice. But um, I just I play... found it. Mm, what do you think? Kind of. I don't know. I didn't hate it, but I mm. found it quite dice. Obviously, it's dice based, and I found basically playing the numbers and setting up according to where stats basically tell you to go um, really helped me. Um, but I I didn't find 
the the harbours, the docks, particularly useful? Because, I mean, we actually, as a group, started quite interacting quite well, so we were trading yeah. between players. Yeah. Now, I have heard a criticism of the game that a lot of people don't bother doing that, and everyone just sort of buggers off to the ports. Mm. Um, but I didn't find that. But, I mean, I thought it was okay. I don't really get all the hype around it, because I think it was kind of... It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't brilliant. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing it again. I would uh, probably... But I wouldn't seek it out. I'd probably, if somebody sat down and said, you want a game, I'd try it so I can experience it, so I can finally take it off my list of shame, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, it's, well, as I say, it's not a bad game. I mean, I I don't, um, I don't dislike it, but I can certainly see where Steve's coming from. I mean, I don't think he hates the game itself. I think he just hates what it stands for and what it, what it represents. It's basically, you know, the single-handed, um, this is the, the this is the game that got everyone into board games. Yeah, um, and that's, but uh... it didn't get him into board games at all. <laughs> okay. Which is why he's basically no, it didn't at all. Um... He's on a one man mission to go around and say it was nothing like this at all. It was something completely <laughs> different. Don't you say? Almost, it almost like that. But it wasn't. No, it was um, what got Steve really sort of into it over you know sort of five, six, seven years ago was um, was actually Carcassonne um, on the Xbox. And he's a big fan of all the Cthulhu mythos as well. Yeah, so yeah. Obviously, all the Arkham stuff floating about has definitely piqued his interest, as I'm sure you've probably got from the podcast. Yes, Anytime just there's, a little there's a Cthulhu bit. knocking about. Yeah, exactly. Just a little bit. But how did you get... I mean, moving back then, so how did you get into the hobby then? What was... Because um, you said well, it's, it's actually, only been 12 months, haven't you? Or how long have uh, you... No, sorry. It's how probably long? a little more than yeah, that. Yeah, um, for, Since my resurgence. Maybe 18 months. Yeah. Um, or thereabouts. But, I mean, I... I mean, even as a youngster, uh, we played, you know, board games as a family. Uh, when I was sort of, you know, a wee, a wee nipper. Um, uh, you know, things like Monopoly and Game of Life, Trivial Pursuit, there's Game of Knowledge, all this, you know, all the, the, the sort of the classic yeah. 80s and previous that, you know, everyone hates these days because it's just roll and move and everyone hates that. But it was it was fun. I mean, I've, I've still got actually a few of them on my shelf now. You, if, you, if you've seen the shelfie I've posted on uh, the uh, Facebook <laughs> board game group ages ago, there's like a row of about six or seven really, really old um board games in like one one part of Kallax. And some of them some of those games are actually older than me. Um That's and there's one scary. called the business game which just sounds so boring. Um <laughs> but originally it was called I oh know it is the business game. That's what it's called. How exciting. That's it's um, like punishment, isn't it? Now you've got yeah, an option much. here. You've got three hours in your room or we play the business game. Oh please don't do that, money <laughs> Do you know what though? It's actually quite a good game. <laughs> I'm, I mean, um, I'm sure. I mean, this is the thing with childhood. I think the only ones that really kind of get me, kind of, oh, is um, Monopoly. But even Monopoly oh, really? has a sense of skill once you kind of get past the randomness. And uh, there's a point. Yeah, it's basically you just need to be a complete bastard for the entire <laughs> game. Exactly. <laughs> I'd like to trade you this, this, and this. Well, that's not happening. Oh, yes, be gone, I have. Be gone, I have, peasant. <laughs> I've got five houses on Whitechapel, so yes, you will be paying me all of your money. I know. Indeed. <laughs> it's always, always good. But um, when would you say, what, what were the kind of the games, once you moved on from the stable stuff, what were the kind of the first games that you dabbled into then, would you say? Um, I think it was probably when I went to school. Um, I mean, I didn't get into sort of modern board games, as you'd call it, hmm. um, until sort of 18, 18 months or so ago. Uh, and maybe maybe a little bit longer, because every now and again we've sort of played a game at John's over the last the last few years. But hmm. um, what really kicked me off on the tabletop stuff was all the Warhammer uh, 40k and all the Games Workshop stuff when I was at school. So sort of right. between sort of 11 and 16, or even older. Um, I saw you know the, the the six formers at the time playing things like Man of War and all the epic forty uh, yeah, k, yeah. uh, and even the one of my fantasy battles and stuff like that, and thought that's for me. So I started <laughs> I playing scared. all of that. <laughs> it's either that or I have to go and talk to talk to like potentially girls. <laughs> oh no, we don't want to do that. No, uh, they were a for a foreign land back then. <laughs> they were totally. Um, but uh, so that's that's kind of where I came from, mm. and as a as a teenager, I, I spent an inordinate amount of money uh, at Games Workshop. So I had how many um, do you games. have? How many figures? Oh, God, I had oh hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. 
Um, I had an entire Blood Angels army with tanks and uh, Predator tanks, Lehman Ross, a Rhino, a bunch of um, little sort of drop pod things. I had all f- I had three of the four Greater Demons, and these were 40k scale Greater Demons. These were massive. Um, I had a Gene Stealer Tyranid army because I bought I had Space Hulk, like the original Space Hulk. Oh yeah, 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 no, no. I, yeah. I, 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 I still had it a couple of years ago, but I've managed to sell it. Oh. And you know what? These days, I'm like, oh, I really wish I hadn't because it's a brilliant, brilliant game. But it's full of Gene Stealers and hybrids and all this sort of stuff. So um, I loved Space Hulk. I still do, really. I've um, got Advanced Space Crusade. So did I. I've got and I it. Really no, enjoyed I've it. Still, I've still got it, and it's got the Gene oh, Stealers and the Tyranids, and also brilliant. Confession time. I've got. I've got um, Space Crusade, Advanced Space Crusade, Advanced Hero Quest. I've got Hero oh. Quest Advanced, which is wow. the other way around. Um, yes, that was the one where you um, they released it very, very limited numbers, but it was essentially you brought in the Men of Arms figures. Oh, wow. So you could bring them in. So um, I've got that. I'm trying to think what else I've got. <sighs> I've got like a couple of the Hero Quest expansions as well, and they're all sitting quite safely, oh, um, wow. somewhere safe. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Not telling the family. No, no, no. no, no. no I, I think, what else have I got? I think I've got Battle Masters <laughs> as well. Oh, fantastic! I am actually raging with jealousy now. Oh, we're gonna have remember... a, we're gonna have a retro night anyway at some point. So. Oh, brilliant! I mean, I remember um, Advanced Space Crusade because that was it became Tyranid Attack. Yes, I mean this is this is how closely I followed Games Workshop, um, and I don't think Tyranid Attack was as good. No, it took me ages to understand how um, Advanced Space Crusade worked. But once you get it, it's a really, really, really good game. You start running around a Tyranid ship, sort of battering the crap out of um, its organs and whatever else happens to be running around. Yeah, um, that was the best part and- about it. It was completely. It was the start of the kind of the cardboard. The cardboard proper printed stock, and you weren't having to imagine anything, so it wasn't like an RPG where it was like, I'm going to stick down tiles here, here, and here. You actually got the cardboard stock, lovely, bright, garish, illustrated, kind of different cut out tiles, which were beautiful to look at because they were. It wasn't. Um, remember Space Crusade, how you had the dull metal grey kind of corridors? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was proper LSD induced. It was really bright oh, and colourful. It was fantastic. It was, it was absolutely yeah. brilliant. It was absolutely. And I really brilliant. enjoyed it because, as I say, because it's it's almost like it's run from like this one sort of board basically with all these little counters on. Yeah. And you turn over the little cards, it gives you each encounter. Yeah. And you can make it as big or as small as you wanted. Oh, it was completely customizable. It was so, it was a it was a good fun. But then I didn't have many people to play with at the time, so the number of games that I got was very very kind of small. So it kind of it hung around and then it got put away and then it's just kind of stayed, stayed around basically. Yeah, um, I struggled with it like that as well. Uh, just try to find people to play. But I mean, so did you then, after your work, after your games workshop and obviously after you went and spoke to somebody and had an intervention about buying so many Games Workshop <laughs> things. Did you just drift away from it? Because for a time I always thought kind of Games Workshop maybe lost their way a bit in terms of what they were trying to kind of offer people. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was kind of uh, two, two, twofold, really. I mean, one... I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with you that Games Workshop kind of went a bit weird for a while. Yeah. Once they started, I think, uh, releasing, I think it was third edition Warhammer 40k, which I never got, because I got the second edition, like, the first box set. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'd played, um, like, Rogue Trader and stuff in, in, in the shops, but I never actually bought it. Uh-huh. I didn't have a bloody clue what was going on. It's just, you know, you're sort of walking around as an 11-year-old, go, right, roll this dice, put this here, put this here, <laughs> right, he's dead, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, these, like, sweaty teenagers telling you what was going on. I didn't have a clue, but... So once I got into it, it was good fun. But, um, yeah, I, I sort of left school, and then I went up to, um, to St Andrews to uni. All right, okay. So just up the road from you, yeah. Just up the road from yeah. me, I know. Hi. I was there for nine years, um, so I know I know Fife very well. Um, but uh, whilst at uni, I didn't really do much of any of it. Um, the occasional game now and again. And of course, there are a few people sort of walking around and, you know, that you know do RPGs and, and, and that sort of side of things. Yeah. But uh, at uni, it was very much sort of video games and, and drinking and fraternizing yeah. uh, more than anything else. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I didn't do very much at uni at all, apart from computer games. But I mean, during that, I mean, I played things like Baldur's Gate and mm. um, 
what else is out there? Um, yeah, th those sorts of RPGs, and I really, really loved them. Um, and that's pretty much where I, I, I grew my, my love of um, D&D from. Um, although I did play things like Eye of the Beholder as well, which I think was first edition, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was... Um, I mean, there was a big push, I think, at the time, because D&D &D went through a... It's, there's always, obviously, there's always going to be, like, a core group of people that said, I have played D&D &D for the last 25, 30 years, and I've always played it. But then I think it was another one of these things that kind of was bubbling along, but then yeah. recently it's kind of gained a bit more momentum now it's really kind of picking up so i think they kind of brought in games like eye of the beholder to pretty much remind you well here's the computer version of this where you're not rolling dice so you're not preparing your character as much and things like that and obviously that moved on to your more kind of your arcade <coughs> type games so yeah where so you're out in the barren wasteland there is not a hint known of... Known as the Kingdom not, of Five. No, exactly. <laughs> it's got a good chips. Aye, it you, does, You aye. must have went to Anstruther there. You must have went to Anstruther and got yourself oh, a couple of, course. of fish I've suppers. been there many, many times. It's, and, it's beautiful. And there's two, um, there's two fish and chip shops. There's the famous one, and then there's the one that's about three or four hundred yards along the road. And if, and if the famous one is queued up, you're guaranteed you could always get chips from the smaller one at any time at all. Oh, I, yeah. It's it was a good always, chippy, actually. Oh, it was a very, very good chippy. So, oh. you're out in Fife, the barren wasteland of the world, and then you're getting back into cardboard. So, how did you, I mean, this, I mean, how did you get back into the hobby again? Um, well, it was, as I say, it was only 18 months, two years ago. Yeah. It was kind of a combination of, um, of Steve and my, and my, my girlfriend, my good lady, because she's got, I mean, she's got Catan, so she's sort of played that before I had, and uh, she's got a couple of other things, so I ended up playing that, and uh -huh. Steve and, and John, um, had obviously played regularly, relatively regularly, uh -huh. uh, and I got kind of stuck in there, and I started seeing this stuff and thinking, hmm, this looks quite interesting, yeah. so, um, about, I think it must have been 18 months, maybe two years ago, maybe not quite that long, that I, I, I ended up sort of dipped my toe into the water of, uh, of, I think I got Dead of Winter was probably my first, what you'd call modern board game. That um, is a hell of a game to get is, back in a, to get back into board games with. That is a granddaddy yeah. of all games. I mean, it's brilliant. I really love it. I don't play it that often, sadly, cause, but because uh, it's it's quite tense and it's quite it's quite stressful actually. Dead of it's Winter. quite tiring, isn't it? I it mean, is. you have you, like you a three. For so long. You have like a two and a half hour session of Dead of Winter, and you feel like you've gone through the kind of the stress of it all, especially if you've got somebody who's decided to be clever and a bit of a betrayer. Yes, you know, I've not actually played a game of Dead of Winter where there's been a betrayer. Oh, rather bizarrely, um, we've just all got away with it. We've we've played one where we thought there was, mm -hmm. but uh, it turns out they weren't. They were just being a douchebag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just decided I'm not gonna. I don't, I don't fancy uh, giving stuff. No, I'm fine. Uh, you can all no, starve. I'm good. Cheers for that. No. Feel um, but it's it's I think my my modern love now has really quickly escalated after that because then yeah I started playing um, Robo Rally and ah. um, so Steve got me involved in uh, in the podcast and and the uh, and then I discovered uh, Kickstarter which uh, <laughs> yeah has, we can uh, yeah we can talk about Kickstarter I think um, yeah um, because if there's one thing you guys talk about on the Kickstart on the podcast quite a few times it's Kickstarter. And it seems that you have picked up a like <laughs> for Kickstarter. Uh, yeah, that's that's one way of putting it. Yeah, I think. I mean, others others may say a, a crippling financial addiction. Yeah, um, <laughs> I actually because I've got in total, I've now got, and this is since about April last year, so less than a year ago. Uh. I have now funded sixteen. Um, board game projects. Really? Of yeah, of which I have received four. Now I'm due <laughs> like two or three <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. I know. So well, I mean, basically, I'm going to receive at least one board game now between now and the end of 2017. At least one a month. That's, that's fantastic, uh, that's isn't how it? That's how many I've got, which is great to look forward to. Yeah. But then you sort of you look at the amount of money I've actually spent on it and think, oh my god, I could have bought a car for that. It's a surprise package through the mail, isn't it? Because um, it is, yeah. it's. Um, 
it can be quite easy just to go in and just say, well, that looks interesting, or there's been a bit of a, there's been of a, a kind of a bit of a buzz. I mean, um, is there anything you're looking at the moment on Kickstarter that you've thought that looks really good? I might actually go for that. There was actually, in fact, I I actually chose to back, and then I sort of bailed out of. Um, oh God, what's it called? Um, hang on, I'm going to have to have a look online now. Um, Don't say Gloomhaven. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't. I'm actually really annoyed. I because I I I didn't I didn't know much of Kickstarter when Gloomhaven was funding. So um, thankfully, I kind of avoided that. But oh, I made up for it with with Deep Madness, which is. Uh, going to be hefty but uh, <laughs> yeah i recently i put i put um a back down for the shared dream i don't know if you've seen all right that. okay yeah um which is kind of a of uh, dreams and magic rpg uh-huh. um, and it sounded it sounds and looks really really cool and yeah kind of my my cup of tea but i thought i looked at it and went mm, and then i bailed out of it but i mean the pro the project hasn't finished yet so i might still dip my toe back all in right, okay um but at the moment there isn't actually i think fortunately for my for my bank account uh, a huge amount on kickstarter that i'm particularly interested in well um, you know allow me as your potential dealer to maybe enlighten <laughs> to maybe <laughs> to, to maybe enlighten you this is a trap <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Admiral Akbar time. You know, it's a trap. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I think a couple that have piqued my interest. Um, well, we mentioned. I mean, we've mentioned Orsum, and I'm still insisting people have a look at it because it looks very, very cute. Um, mm. Have you seen GKR Heavy Hitters? I have not. No. It's wetter. As in, Winter. yeah, as in the special effects guys that did Lord of the Rings. They've done a board game. Ah, sure, sure, sure. They've only okay. gone ahead and done a board game. So it's like a robot. It's basically giant robots fighting each other in a city. Ah, no, I have seen this. Yes, 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 yes. yes. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, yes. Because me and Matt Jarvis were talking about it the last episode that we did and it's kind of like this looks... They're based in New Zealand, so... It's the kind of the time scales where people are starting to kind of bump their gums about the fact there's no updates at, <laughs> during the hours mm. of nine to five, and people are having to remind <laughs> them they're actually in New Zealand, so it's not gonna, not gonna, it's not gonna happen just yet. Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of um, it's just big, huge, giant robots. It's not big, huge, giant robots fighting, um, fighting monsters, which if they did a Pacific Rim board game. Take my money now, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That would be pretty that cool, be actually. No... Oh my goodness, we should do that. We re... yeah, that, that. That would be pretty good. Right. Right, okay. Let's we'll, design... we'll launch it next year. Let's design that. Um... We, we'll have, we've got dibs on the idea now if anyone's uh, decided to rip <laughs> yeah, us off. So exactly. We've come up with it first. We're just going to edit out this bit of the podcast. Ah, That's, that's the way idea. to do this. Let's have nobody, yeah. let's have nobody listening. Um, the other one I've seen... And I'm only mentioning this because um, it's by um, it's uh, John Gilmore's involved, mm -hmm. um, and it's Dinosaur Island. I think I have seen that as well. And it's basically build your own version of Jurassic Park. It's like we're building Jurassic Park, but we don't have the license <laughs> to use the word Jurassic Park. But it is essentially <laughs> building yourself a lovely little dinosaur island. Oh, okay. So that looks like it's also interesting as well. I'm not going to give figures and stuff like that. I'll allow the people to have a look at them just now. And I'm not going to give figures because I'm not entirely sure when this episode is going to be going out as well. But it looks kind of interesting. Mm. It looks kind of cool as well. So we're keeping a good we're keeping a good eye on it. Um, oh, sure. I mean, we also spoke recently. We also had an interview with a guy from Elements, um, Justin, as well. So. Um, oh yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So we're taking a taking a kind of a look at that um yeah so there you go then andy because <laughs> <laughs> the back it gives the back <laughs> it's good it's yeah, enabling the, um, <laughs> we yeah, the heavy hitter listeners. the heavy hitters looks quite good yeah basically but it, you know you just you've just hooked me again you <laughs> swine you. there you go and the look at the stretch goes just tumble no it's look not happening no no stuff. no no nah, it's all right i've got all the stuff 
Stop it. Luke. You're a bad man. <laughs> All <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> no, at the moment, I'm actually waiting on... Um, I've got this War of Mine on its way. Oh, I so want that. I've heard you mention yeah. it, and it's almost like you're teasing me every single time you mention it on the podcast that you have this War of Mine coming along. I do. I do. I I'm bo- kind of annoyed, actually. I didn't back it slightly heavier than I did. Yeah. I mean, you're getting quite a lot in the box anyway. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. like four expansions and goodness knows what else. So, I mean, for, for the for the £58 that you, you back, you're getting tons in the box. Um but there's a few other bits and bobs I wouldn't mind getting, but it's a bit late now because it's something it's it's basically on the boat. So, mm. um, but it'll be it looks brilliant and uh, played. I don't know if you played the computer game as well. It's um, um, they actually released the this war is mine. The little ones was out in P- PlayStation Plus recently, so I've not right. had a chance to dive into that because I've been playing. Um, to my shame, I've been playing Stardew Valley. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah which sure. is the kind of like it's um it's almost like it's a little kind of farming game. Everybody who knows what Stardew Valley is knows that it's pretty much like it's just ridiculously very very moresome to the point where mm. all you're doing is you're getting up in the morning and watering some crops and then going <laughs> for a, like the going things. for a wander in a village or farm and then sp- yeah something like that. You know, wandering about and then going back and if your crops are ready you harvest them and if they're not you're not. So it's just you can you can basically you can get a chicken coop and then your chickens, your hens will lay eggs. And then you have a mayonnaise machine and you can make mayonnaise <laughs> and you can sell the mayonnaise. And you can do all oh. different types of things. And it's just ridiculous because I've that. no, 'cause I've been putting down things like Overwatch and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> to get him away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, keep me away from uh, it's that. It's just so it's just worth it. It's so fantastically lovely. I think the game the you know, when everything's kinda of dull and and drab and grey and Stardew Valley's just lovely and that is the only video game mm. I'm kinda of mentioning and it's the only one I'm I'm kinda of playing. Um sure. is there anything you're playing at the moment board game wise then? Yes, actually. Um, I mean, it's kind of vaguely on the subject of Kickstarter as well. Um, yes. I recently received uh, Martians, A Story of Civilization. Oh, right. Okay. Which I I guess is kind of a, I wouldn't really say a competitor to, uh, but it's kind of along the same lines as um, Terraforming Mars, which I have to admit, I haven't played. I mean, our regular sort of Tuesday night crowd have had it out a few times and i've never actually got around to playing it i've seen it um, played i was played on friday night at the club when um mm. we were playing um we were playing viticulture and um the guys the guys in the next table were playing terraforming mars and said it was rather lovely yes i've heard nothing but good things about terraforming mars. yes I've also heard it's incredibly difficult to get hold of as well, though. Yeah, at the moment. it is. I think they're making another print run at the moment. I've yeah. seen videos and things, but uh, goodness knows when and where we'll ever find one. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm not going to talk too much about Marshall. No, for, as we said. For, uh, for fear of ruining <laughs> our own podcast. Yes. Um, but uh, suffice to say that it's actually quite good. Um, mm. I'm generally quite enjoying it. I've only played a couple of uh, two full games of it so far, uh-huh. but there's so many different game modes of it because you can play solo, co-op, semi-co-op, and um, and um, competitive. So there's loads of different ways to play it. Uh-huh. Um, it's basically worker placement, so obviously it falls into my sort of pet genre. Um, but um, there's a lot in the box. Mm. Um, there are. A couple of issues with, uh, I wouldn't say the game itself, but uh, certainly the manual. That's uh, tough going. All right, is it not very well written? Or? It's probably one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever read in my okay. life. Okay, well, that's, um, let's just leave that at leave that yeah. there. Then. I mean, I'll, we'll, well, I'm sure we'll go into more detail. I'm in sure the, you'll go into a massive amount of detail in the actual podcast. And if you want to hear that, that'll be out probably recording in the next couple of weeks. And it's not on here, it's on you drink a lighter. There you go. There's Indeed. your. F- there's your, there's your <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, um, but I've also got. Uh, what did I get recently as well? Um, I can talk actually about Ave Roma. Um, oh yeah, because you mentioned you know, that. That was one of your kind of. You were really excited about that. 
kind of clear yeah something. now Steve and I and John um, did talk about it briefly in our sort of Christmas show. Yes, you um, did. Kind of, you know, games that we, we really like and, and uh, things we're looking forward to as well. Um, so I can kind of get away with a bit more now because I think it's probably a bit late for us to talk about it on our on our podcast. Yeah. Um, but um, I got Ave Roma as well through, through uh, Kickstarter. Right. Oh, God, it must be, I don't know, November time, maybe October time. Um, was it? Even sooner than that. Was it a long time waiting for it? No, actually. Um, I backed it in, oh God, it must have been, I don't know, um, June last year, maybe, maybe maybe May. But I got it in sort of September, late September, early October. So it, it was a really quick turnaround. So is this the Ave um, Roma Premium Edition? It's like a circular kind of board. Yes. And it was by A Games. Yes, yeah. I've actually that's on the, the Kickstarter one. page, actually. So, And yeah. it funded... Oh, it had a goal of €20,000, and it funded three times, three and a half times that. So that's pretty, pretty good. So there's you and another 1,100 people that got the game at the same time. So what's it about? Yeah. What's it all about? Well, it's a medium-heavy if uh, worker placement, if, if, if Board Game Geek is to be believed. Mm. Um. I would say it's absolutely cranium breaking uh, in its uh, in its initial complexity, um, just because it's there's a lot to to get in your head to start with. I mean, it's it's like a lot of worker placement games. You kind of need to know everything before you start, yeah. Which sort of does your head in. But then once you start to play it, it's actually quite fluid and really really straightforward. Um, and I really really like it. I'm really glad I backed it. Um, it's a fantastic wee game, um, and for a sort of a medium heavy euro, um, you can get through it in about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, it's actually really quick because it scales really well for the number of players you've got. Yeah. Um, so it scales from because a lot of, one of the biggest problems I found with a lot of worker placement games is um, the the two player version can almost end up like a race. Yes. Um, and this, I mean, I know Euphoria is very guilty of this. Um, sorry, Jamie. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's not the only one. Um, there's a, there's a few. I mean, I think worker placement games generally do suffer the two player drag, as it were. You need at least three, really. Yeah. But Ave Roma gets round that by the way the worker placement mechanic works because you start the game with five workers each numbered one to five mm -hmm. and you do your little round of placing your, your workers down in the various areas and getting your resource and doing whatever you do but at the end of each round um you collect up workers but not necessarily yours because all the workers are all the same they all look they're all white yeah um, either discs in the normal game or pillars in, in this game uh -huh. and you can basically pick up whichever workers you want from a specific from a single area until you, you're up to five um, workers again so you could you basically stack your deck in in your favors you can end up with like four threes and a five or mm -hmm. you know two ones two twos and a three or something like that because there's areas of the board where the numbers that the number the, the number of the worker is restricted so you you're basically trying to sort of um plan your your next uh, round uh, by getting the workers you want to affect the areas of the board that you want to affect okay um and the two-player version you 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 end up um playing with a, like a ghost player so each player has a ghost player the the, the, the ghost players don't serve any purpose other than to give you more choice uh, about when you pick your workers up at the end of the round yeah okay uh, otherwise you'd be really limited and it works really really well um because there's so much going on in the game as well it never feels like a race because it's almost impossible to tell who's winning at any one point in time. <laughs> it's, it's like other <laughs> games they've been playing recently. Um, Aye. But, no, I mean, it looks... Um, see, there's games like this that you just miss. Hmm. And this is one of the things, as a quick aside, this kind of annoys me on Kickstarter, that um, you'll kind of see, always see the campaigns, For sometimes you'll see the campaigns for the for the good, like the bigger guys. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad I found this. Actually, it's a bit of a gem because yeah. um, even at, even at Essen, I think it was kind of swiftly dogpiled uh, under you know all the bigger and better ones like mm. um, 
uh, you know, the edge and um, all that sort of stuff that was showing off all his miniatures and all that sort of jazz. Mm-hmm. But um, it did get a look in, and I think I think Tom Vassell covered it in the Dice Tower, um, so it did get a bit of coverage. Um, but I think it did get swamped slightly, which is a shame because it's a really, really good game. Yeah, you just wonder if something like this is ever going to reach kind of retail. Do you know what I mean? Because if it's ever yeah. going to have a kind of a separate retail release, if they're ever going to have enough money to, well, I mean they should. I mean they triple funded, but again, it's like, did they make all? Are they going to be using that all up on kind of the stretch goal production? Are they not going to be making a lot of money, kind of off mm. the back of this? But we'll have to. I guess we'll have I to think see. They, they, they probably could, I think, because, I mean, this is the premium one. I think the intention is, if you're still reading the rule book, yeah. that instead of using the wee pillars that they've got for the worker placements, they've actually just used wee discs yeah. for okay. normal version. So it shouldn't cost them as much. And yeah. then there's five expansions that came with the game for the Kickstarter, but obviously they won't be included in the base game either. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit, I haven't played any of the expansions yet. The game's complicated enough as it is. Yeah. Um, so I think there's definitely scope for them to do it. Um, get, I reckon yeah. if they did produce it, it'd probably be of the order of about forty quid. I reckon, which is um, not. It's not bad. That's not. It's I not. Brilliant. They should it's not Whether they do or not, obviously, is another matter. But yeah. you do get a lot in the box, so it's it's definitely good value. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of game for it. There's a lot of replayability because no two games are going to be the same um, because there's just so much going on. So uh, I, I definitely thumbs up from me. All right, okay. um, Steve and I played it the first time ages ago when I first got it, and it did our heads in. I mean, we both walked away like we'd been uh, <laughs> absolutely just assaulted. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It does look like one of these things where you've got like you've got two, you've got a big, huge circular game board where it looks like you've got cards, and then you've got kind of like points trackers, and then everybody's kind of like got a semi little arc where they can put more and more counters and then you've got cards and then you've got coins and then you've got wooden markers and you've got more cards and you've got um area tiles and you've got i mean i yeah, can imagine much. that the uh, <laughs> the actual instruction I mean, manual is going to be bad enough as it is it's actually really well written all right to okay. be fair it's really clear um i so say it takes a bit it takes you a bit of time to get your head around mm. it but Every section of it is really well written. It's easy to find stuff in it, which really helps because I mean, it's it, it, it. Given the complexity of the game, I think they did obviously run the risk that if they didn't get the rule book right, it would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, but so, no, they've done really well with it, and I really do hope it does hit the shelves because it's a very good worker placement game, uh, in my humble opinion. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, there's so many decent games that you think. If they got a retail release, they would do kind of really, you know, they would do kind of well if they got kind of picked up and people end up, um, they sometimes disappear. They get like a one print and then they're kind of gone. They're kind of Mm. gone forever and a day. I mean, um, I'm just having a, having a look. I know there's been a few success stories that I've kind of had in the past, like Steampunk Rally, which is a lovely little game. Yeah, that's now kind of made commercially available. But mm, then there's mm, game. I mean, there's. Um, I guess there's games like Ophir, um, which I think you can buy through the website, but I don't think it's got a retail release. Isaac Childress' previous game. Did you ever touch that Forge War? I've not. Uh, no, I've not played it. I've se- I've I've heard of it and I've seen it, but I've never actually played it. That's very very good, and it's mm. very very good at tackling the kind of the, the two player kind of question as well because you're worker placement but then you're turning your workers into fighters so you're basically producing the raw material it's like a couple of different mini games where you're essentially kind of this is me getting my resources this is me arming my heroes and then my heroes based on them having the right resources can go ahead and they can complete kind of they can kind of complete quests so for all you people who are crying over the fact you haven't got gloomhaven (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> and who isn't um, I think I've yeah. seen uh, another Kickstarter for these guys I think we've already you know I've already said that they're going to have to do another Kickstarter to get another print so yeah that's yeah. interesting I mean, it's a big box that's interesting it's about the size of my sofa it's ridiculous annoyingly though there's nobody in my sort of regular or regular sort of Worcester um, 
game group that has actually backed it. So we're all sort of sat there, there's like 15, 20 of us thinking, oh, for God's sake, <laughs> it's nobody like, backed this. Who's going to find out who backed it? Or oh, it's worse, they'd go like a, do a kind of interrogation and find out who backed it but dropped out. Mm. I did. Don't. Did you? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Oh, you must be kicking yourself. I'm kind of, a, I kind of, I kind of maybe am, and I'm kind of maybe not, because um, I guess this takes us on to, there are kind of games that I have received which I still haven't played. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like, you know, we've had our first confession, which is games that we should really be playing if we're doing a podcast about board games. Oh, totally, yeah, yeah. But the second one is games that we have that have been staring at us for a long time that we should have actually played by now. Yes. Now, I'm going to go first with this one. Okay. And I'm going to say Imperial Assault. (gasps) Oh, good lord. Yes. Um, I haven't actually played that, but I've seen it played. (laughs) I I haven't actually played that. And I see it every time I open my gaming <laughs> You've cover. got it sat on your shelf. It's actually oh, sat no. on the shelf. And it's one of these things where me and... Do you know what the issue is? Is that for a while, me and Colin and the fantastic Mr. Leo, um, who does all the art and logo work for us, we mm. played Descent. And ah, yes. we thought, well, Descent, that would be fantastic. And kind of looking around for Descent, we got so far into the campaign and then we kind of just, we stepped away because we thought, well, time was precious and we wanted to play other games. So then I thought, well, Imperial Assault, that um, looks like it's interesting. It's very Star Wars. I hadn't too long ago kind of been been um, kind of, I guess, introduced to the wonder that was... Um, the wonder that was X-Wing. And I thought, well, mm. if I can get some kind of ground-based action, then this would be fine. So at the time, I think it was... I don't know if it was I got lucky, there was some kind of sale going on, but I got it for really, really next to nothing. Oh, Jimmy G. And then I got it, and it's been sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's been sitting there. Now, if you want... Taunting it, you. If you want, okay, well, you know, as the confessions continue... If you look at the, if you look at the We're Not Wizards website, and the header banner on it, and um, that um, there's a picture of assault of, of Imperial assault on the right hand side, and it's sitting above Descent. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's moved, but it's moved to the bottom of the pile. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's now pinned. Is this basically just it's your just, self-relegation? You've just realised, oh, I'm not going to play I'm that anytime gonna, soon. Oh, do you know what? It's a nice strong box, so it can take the weight. Aye, yeah. <laughs> FFG make a good box. So that's that's they something do. they do. I do mean, well. I, think, um, I think I did have Rivet Wars there for a while, and uh, unfortunately Rivet Wars, when I took the box out, it got caught in the corner, and there was a little bit of stress caused on it which yes. kind of made me made me cry so yeah imperial assault not played it <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. not played it um i mean just slightly on the subject that uh, i know steve's got um imperial assault and he's played it a few times yeah um but uh, i know obviously i've got doom which i'm told is very similar so uh, uh, but a bit simpler yeah which I really enjoy, actually. I think Doom's a brilliant game. How did the mechanics? The board, how yeah. did the mechanics work out? Because if I remember, one of the first conversations we ever had was about Doom being announced, and the mechanics. Um, it was maybe Steve that was because it was it was like what we were worried about was it mimicking the actual video game in the sense that once you attack somebody and you got them down to a certain health, you could kind of execute them, kind of thing. Yeah, you get what's called a glory kill, which is from the uh, from, from the, the video game. game. Yeah, basically, yeah. the the demons kind of stagger. It's, they basically become what's called staggered. So the demons start sort of flickering orange, and you basically walk up to them and sort of punch them in uh, whatever orifice you choose, All right. and sort of rip something off them and beat them up. Oh, that's pretty and cool. the, the way they do that in the uh, in the board game is that um, you basically just move into their space, and it's a, kind of an instant frag. Oh. Uh, and then you get a, a get a card, so it's like a, a glory kill card, uh, which represents pretty much what happens in the computer game so usually what happens if you in the computer game if you, you glory kill someone um 
it spawns a bunch of health, so you regenerate a bit of your health, yeah. and it's usually a bunch of ammo as well. Um, whereas in the board game, the glory kill cards give you like a slight, you know, short burst of energy, or give you extra movement, or an additional sort of one 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 shot action, or something like that. So it's very much in the spirit of the computer game, and I think I think they've done really well in 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 um, capturing um, the the video and put it into cardboard form. Which I quite uh, I quite like. Yeah, how many, the, the problem I found yeah. with Doom is that it's a pain in the ass to set up. It's so faffy. Is it? Yeah, I'm surprised. So many yeah. characters. I suppose that's the same with the Descent as well because we used to, we actually needed to um, use Hugo's amazing tape, which I don't know if you're aware of, but it's basically cellophane but costs an absolute fortune. And what it is, is it's, made, it's essentially just kind of thick cling film, which comes in different colours. And what you do is you mm. cut it into strips and you can wrap it around playing, you can wrap it around cards. And what it does is it keeps them together. So it's cool. And it sticks to itself, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, but what yeah, we had to yeah, do yeah, with Descent know. was, in order to stop the, stop the setup time with Descent, which was frankly ridiculous, mm. We wrapped everything around in Hugo's amazing tape and kind of kept them and even took photographs of the board so we could remember what we were doing and what we were playing. So that was kind of like <laughs> the other thing. But have you, oh, did you say, have you played Doom then a couple of times? Have you, or what? Oh, I've got it. I, I own it. It's brilliant. Um, I love it. So what have I've you? Played, I've played, I played with other people. I've played through it my, on my own a couple of times. All right, well. okay. Oh yeah, it's I, I really enjoy it. Actually, it's a really good game. It's slightly biased, I think, towards the Marines. Yeah. Uh, certainly in the earlier missions, but once you get towards the end, I mean, I've played one game because Luke um, from Broken Meeple and I were convinced that it was too weighted towards the Marines, uh -huh. so I picked a mission sort of slightly further on through the campaign. Did you get? And, get yeah. Uh, played a four-player Marine game, and, and honestly, the Marines didn't even get out the first room. They got absolutely <laughs> murdered. <laughs> So I think yeah, that's that. That's that theory put to bed. So well, there you go. <laughs> so confession. So, didn't even get a, a look in. So confession time. What have you got sitting on the shelf that you haven't played? Um, actually, still on the subject of FFG, I have. Oh, here we go. Um, I bought, I bought this probably about eight or nine months ago. Yeah. Because it was sat in my sort of the the, the local cheap game shop in Worcester. And I thought, oh, I've had my eye on it for a while. I bought Twilight Imperium um, with both expansions. <clears throat> and they are still sat on my shelf and remain unplayed. That's... I've played, you know, trying to understand the rules, so like on my own, but I've never got past like more than one round because it's just so mind meltingly complicated. It's impossible for one brain <laughs> to keep track of, you know, four or five players. So I have not played Twilight Imperium. I don't know um, if that makes you fully. a bad person or if that makes a person that's willing that time is precious to them because every time I've heard somebody speaking about Twilight Imperium it is along the same lines as things like Eclipse which I've been hearing a lot of recently that it takes an absolute bloody age to play kind of Twilight Eclipse Imperium. isn't that bad but yeah Twilight apparently takes you know like eight hours so basically, it's it's. Um, well, as Steve and I came up with a theory. Actually, it's, I don't know if, if you remember from the, the uh, podcast on New Angeles that yeah. uh, FFG games scale with the size of box. <laughs> so the wee boxes take about you know twenty minutes, yeah. and then there's like the sort of the the sort of the, the slightly bigger boxes, and they take about you know an hour or two. That that works very very well. <laughs> Fury of Dracula takes, you know, like four hours, and then you've got the TI size of stuff, or the, the, the big box Mansions of Madness, and you, you basically, you know, um, they take like four, five, six hours, and then Twilight Imperium sort of size is like basically your weekend is hours. It's just, um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine having, do you know what, I can't imagine having the time or having the inclination to sit down and play it, and I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic, and I'm sure the internet will tell us otherwise <laughs> when this episode goes out. <laughs> what are you calling yourself a board gamer? You haven't even played Catan properly. Oh, God. What are you saying? It's like, okay, okay, well, Twilight Imperium, you know, sounds to me like it's like going to work. <laughs> See, I, I, I really like big, complicated games. That's the thing. Um, I my girlfriend refuses to play. I mean, she's played Eclipse. Yeah. And Eclipse is a lot shorter. I mean, it's not a short game. It's like, you know, three, four hours. Yeah, so it's, yeah. I mean, you know, it's an afternoon. But... Um, She's not. I mean, we played. We played Fury of Dracula, and she, we we started at something like eight o'clock at night, 
Um, and we were, we were still playing at one o'clock oh in the morning, at which point she, she, she'd made a mistake and there's rules to cover the mistakes and basically she got screwed over and <laughs> almost flipped the table. <laughs> it's just like, like that. It's past the point of tiredness. You're That's just... it. So she's, she's not a fan of long games, well, heard... which I can see the point. It's, it's just concentrating for that long is very tiring, but I really like it, which is why I'm really keen to play TI, hmm. but... I know John and me and Steve were try, going to try and play it over Christmas because, you know, we're off for sort of 10 days or so yeah, between, yeah. between the sort of Christmas and New Year. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, those two decided to get Galloping Nobrot and both got ill over Christmas. So, Galloping um, Nobrot. <laughs> this is um, like a Terry Pratchett one. The best one I ever heard was, <laughs> oh, he's got licky end. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, that's grim. That just sounds, just sounds amazing. What's, what's Gavin got? Gavin's got licky end. And he's also oh, got he's got scruffles as well. Oh no, Ooh. that scruffle just sounds wrong as well. <laughs> just sounds very, very but so, yeah, they got ill. Right. So we couldn't play it. And so it's it's it has sat and remained unplayed for God it, it honestly it must be the best part of nine months now. Because hmm. um, it's I mean it's it's an investment as well. Because I I I think 'cause I've got <laughs> the third pieces of value. <laughs> this is the thing it's it's not a cheap game no. i mean you get a lot for the money it's a good value game but it's um i mean the base game's like 65 odd quid and then you got the two expansions on top so i spent quite a bit of money on this thing and it's just sat on the shelf mocking me so um, okay so just as a side question then you being new to the hobby and you hmm. obviously what's the storage space situation like i mean are you getting to the point now where you're having to move essential items out of normal cupboards in order to fit games in or do you just have them on an open shelf kind of thing you, I, I mean that's what i said are your games kind of sitting there for everybody to see or are they kept in a cupboard or under the bed like me <clears throat> well it's funny you should ask that because a few weeks ago um i did get to the point where um i'd, I'd keep all my board games in a cupboard hmm. So the big shelf in, in in my sort of um, in my I would say my, my game room yeah where I got my guitars and my aquarium and big table and stuff. Um, it's like says like a proper proper man pad that you've got going on. Oh, it is. It's totally it's brilliant. So in the lounge, <laughs> you've got the PC and the sort of huge telly and the uh, old PlayStation and stuff. And then like the other room is uh, it's like games and guitars and aquarium and big table and stuff. So it's oh yeah, it's it's proper bachelor pad stuff. Um, I mean, apparently one one the one of the um, one of my, 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 my sort of female friends came around one day and said, you can tell a man lives here. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but do you know why? Because it was clean and tidy and I bet you the dishes were put away. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> you know, boy, lads get a bad rap for this, but I know from university, women are the most uh, I'm messy, just, untidy, not, scruffy, unkept not, individuals. You know. It's just <clears> ridiculous. I'm but, just saying that. Yeah, I had a, yeah. I had a cupboard. Um, that all my stuff was in, so this big shelf in sort of the middle of the cupboard, and it was starting to bow under the weight of all this stuff. And I'd literally run out of room, so a few weeks ago, it was, I was off to IKEA for a couple of Canucks. <laughs> so you're all sorted out now. I am. So now they're all on display uh, in my spare room. I've had to reorganise and put my uh, my amp, my guitar amp, into the cupboard instead. You're just bragging um, now. It's like that's what I do. Is I either play board games, or I'm going to play some video games. Or I might just um, sit down with some guitar tab and learn a couple of songs. <laughs> Such is the much, life of that. Although I haven't actually played the guitar properly for about a year. Oh, well, there you go. I picked it up a few weeks ago and oh my God, you could tell. <laughs> I mean, I was never that good to start with and it was just <laughs> recognisable, I think, is about as, as, as good as I got. Have you um, have you seen the Mechs and Minions box? I haven't actually. I know Steve's got it, but I wasn't around for whatever reason when him and John played it. Um, and uh, Steve nearly almost didn't get it. If you if you remember that yeah. podcast where he explained he basically left it on the train uh, <laughs> <laughs> just before Christmas. Just absolutely. I just was like, I was like, part of me was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Part of me was also. That's also potentially the saddest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. But the thing was the fact was this the station, the guy had lost property <laughs> saying, mm. Oh, some kid's gonna be very lucky for Christmas. <laughs> Cause Steve basically, for everybody that's listening, um, is that Steve got mechs and minions and ended up leaving it on the train and ended up having to go back to try and get it from the lost property office. And he rocked up to the lost property office and 
um, luckily they, they had it after and he phoned up and they said yeah it was it was back here so he went along to the lost property office and there was two guys behind the counter and one of them said oh some boy's gonna be very very lucky for christmas <laughs> and apparently like, the other guys the other guy turned around and said nah it's for him I like, that's it that's his <laughs> and i just thought that was that's so brilliant that was some guy in the know it was like giving him the like the fight club the, the fight club kind that's of wink it. yeah you just nod <laughs> kind yeah, of like that that's it yes you know um, but i haven't actually seen the box but i understand it's a bit large it's potentially take two imperial assault boxes and lay them side by side and you've oh, wow. kind of got the length of the mechs and minions box i was shown um because colin was round on saturday with uh, stuart and we were playing scythe which um mm. we'll save for another time but um um because we decided to let's play some more scythe but um i showed him the box and um i says here have a have a have a lift of this and it's i mean it's heavy the guy that distributes the mechs versus minions boxes you don't want to mess with them because that guy's built <laughs> 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 he can lift he's, a pallet he's, he's on his do own the pallet. i mean if you're doing this i mean it's some size of box and it's really really well put together i mean i'm hoping that we'll do an episode on it um over the next couple of months but i don't think i've seen a board game as much care and attention to how the game is packaged up and presenting itself and putting itself together i mean the fact that it's like that in the first place and the fact i'm commenting on how mm, that is mm, just mm. now it's just <clears throat> somebody has said let's make a board game and let's make a pieces and you sometimes get the feeling with fantasy flight that what they do is let's get the board game let's get the pieces and then let's just shove it in our trench box kind of thing Whereas yeah. these, they've actually sat down and went, okay, how do we make this as easy an experience as possible for people to experience it kind of thing? So they've actually yeah. got plastic moulded trays, they've got lovely little compartments, they've got little hidden bits. It's just like, it's like going through um, Thornton's Continental, but the double layer. <laughs> It's funny actually because uh, John and Steve much, basically have said the same thing, not the Thornton's much, bit, but pretty, they've thought of everything. It's brilliant. It's just like this, that is basically what it is. You're kind of going through and you're saying, ooh, and then you go, ah, and then you go, ooh, and ooh. then you go, ah. And then you ah. get the coffee one. And then, yeah, I don't mind the coffee one. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just, one of those weird ones. It's the strawberry ones I'm not a big fan of. They're just a bit yeah, too... Yeah, I find they're too sweet. They're they're a far, bit it's like, how much sugar? Could you get any more sugar in this chocolate? So welcome oh. to welcome to We're Not Chocolatiers. Um, <laughs> but Mex and, yeah, Mex and Minions, that's another one that I, haven't, that I haven't managed to get to the table. There are a few, but me and Colin are working through them as quickly as possible. And there yeah. is going to be a lot of... Um, yeah, we've managed to rattle through a few games of late. The other game I want to play, which I'm going to mention quickly, is the Final Fantasy card game, which um, I managed to get a hold of. Two packs, which um, looks very, very interesting. I'm just wondering how it's going to play. I've not played... I've still not played Magic, Brian. Um, but we'll see, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I never, I never got into Final Fantasy. I have to admit, I played FF Seven on the PlayStation yeah. back in the day, mm. and I, I just, it just didn't grab me. I just don't get what all the fuss is about at all. I tell you, there'll be people on um, Twitter. I know there's going to be people no, pounding look. their their their, uh, their their keyboards with on, <laughs> at this point <laughs> on the twentieth anniversary of Final Fantasy Seven. I said that um, Final Fantasy um, goes downhill after the title screen. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't realize. Ooh, that's a I didn't realize I'd said that um, on the anniversary of Final Fantasy VII, and then I, I went on to say, I don't understand that Final Fantasy VII is blocky nonsense. Why do you all love it so much? And that also got a bit of ire my way. <laughs> The card mm. game seems quite interesting though, because it seems to be kind of like a mixture of kind of like um, maybe magic 
with a little bit of Pokemon, with a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, with a little bit of ooh, there's Final Fantasy characters in here. So we'll see. You, you've just listed four things that I can't stand. Well, there you go. I think that, that that's going to be that's like that's the game I'm going to have to put <clears throat> into the box of no for me. Nah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. The only thing I ever don't like about card games is when they introduce a mechanic so that they're not like the mainstays. Do you know what I mean? When they mm. kind of like introduce something slightly different and they say, okay, basically our main game is you need to get energy in order to be able to build up an army, in order to be able to attack. But you have these four cards that if you draw them, then you have to wait a turn and a half before you can use anything else. So, I mean, mm. there's Just always because. something that can be a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the butt. But Yes, yes, yes. Um, moving on, as I say, I mean, we, the future thing is, is there anything that you are looking forward to in 2017? You've done your show on um, it, but for you, because I know that, you know, just like me now, Steve doesn't like you always get a word in edgeways. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem. Is he? He does. I mean, you, the amount of stuff on the cutting room floor. I think is probably going to be surprising. The amount of crap he cuts me it cuts out from me you'll, just because I don't shut up. You'll be delighted to know that I have neither the um, I have neither the kind of the gumption or the skill to do as much editing as Steve does on the podcast. <laughs> so what I'll be doing is I'll be I'll be basically taking it from the moment we did our clap. I'll be sticking some music on the end in the beginning, and then I'll be getting some show notes together and making it go live and that's as far job done <laughs> job done that'll do job done and then sit and cry and go why have we only got so many listeners it's because you're not ah, professional enough fine. but um no i mean um what else have you got kind of is it in the anticipation um, pipeline yeah, I mean, I'd go back to my, my, my Kickstarter list really here. I mean, there's, 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 I mean, we were talking about big box games yes. there with Gloomhaven and Max vs. Minions. Yes. I mean, I mentioned earlier on I've got uh, Deep Madness that I've funded. Yes. Um, and not just funded, I think, you know, self funded the entire project looking at the amount <laughs> of money I've thrown at it. Um, but I mean, that's not going to come in until November, so I've got a hell of a long wait for that. But I mean, it does look amazing. Um, so it's kind of, it's Lovecraftian um, inspired. Um, it's not actually Cthulhu or anything, but it's kind of, um, it's almost like Arkham at the bottom of the ocean. So it's like an underwater sort of sea base. And um, things go rapidly base over apex. Um, <laughs> That's and, uh, interesting, man. Wow, this <laughs> looks like a... And then you get all these these beasties running around. Um, and it looks, it looks superb. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, it's not crap. Um, I'm sure it won't be. Uh, but, given the the amount of, uh, of of hype and press that it's it's receiving and the amount of effort the guys seem to be putting into it, so I am looking forward to that. One hundred and sixty three miniatures. I'm just on the Kickstarter campaign just now. Oh, ah, yeah, it looks yeah. massive. Um, so oh, it's huge. And I've got the uh, I've got um, I've gone for, I've covered both expansions and the additional epic monsters thing. As I well. don't so want just, to even go there. Insane. I'm not going to question you on this. This is something that you've done yourself. I can't completely. It's how much for that? Don't ask. I can't even publicly say this. So this is ridiculous, no, Andy. No, it's a huge amount of money. It is a huge. It's not. It's fine. You know. Oh no, I know. People have people have put in like six or seven hundred pounds into um, the edge, and it's nowhere near that. Nah, so. that's just crazy. Um, it'll be good. Um, yeah, I just hope we get a lot of play out of it. But there is another one actually yeah. that I am really looking forward to, and I don't think anyone's ever heard of it or, or covered it at all. So I'm kind of sort of almost like a, a self. Um, self-proclamated um, patron saint of this game uh, and trying to give it a bit of coverage actually so I'm, I'm using you as a lever here we'll just uh, do that it's, yeah. it's a game called it's a game called dream wars okay yeah you see even you've not heard of it um which is a steampunk horror board game it's another kickstarter uh, it's due out um in a couple of months time but I, I really have a thing for steampunk. I really, really like it and really enjoy the idea of steampunk. So when, when I found sort of steampunk horror board, and I really like horror, so it's like, well, that's ticking all the boxes. That's a no-brainer. Job done. Um, so I am looking forward to that. Um, I'm just having a look just now. It is done. Mm. I'm just having a look. Dream Wars steampunk horror. That's the one. A game for one to eight players. Is that Antonio Scaccino? That's the one. And when is it out? 
Um, well, it says it's due in June, but uh, according to all of the um, updates and stuff we had on the project, they are slightly ahead of schedule. So we might see it in May, but I'm not holding my breath because uh, a lot of the miniatures and stuff are all done by now, and a lot of the game is. They're just basically putting it all together and printing it and making sure everything's okay at the moment. So, uh, But they do say, you know, the last 10% always takes 90% of the time. Yeah. So, um, they're basically on track, I think, is, is the short answer. And it's due in June, which I think they'll hit. So sure. um, watch this space. Well, I'm sure you'll be talking about it on the Polyhedron Collider podcast. Um, I'm sure we will. The only one I'm looking at, there's two I'm looking forward to, um, and I've mentioned them enough. Um, Charterstone. Yes, yes, Please. yes, yes. I, I share your enthusiasm for that. Thank you definitely. very much. I would be liking to look into a legacy game because I've not got a legacy game. So I wouldn't, and I've been less, I kind of, um, I play Pandemic Legacy kind of vicariously through other people and listening to their stories while never actually knowing the details of the game <laughs> themselves, except people going, yes. this game is so good, everybody says it's so very, very good, I might have to pick up a season, but then it's the time commitment. It is, it is. I mean, is we a... started playing season one, mm. um, me, me, Stephen, John, um, at literally about a year ago today, uh, February last year. Uh, and it's yeah, it represents sort of twelve months of the year, and we've got as far as I think it's I think we finished June, maybe July, mm. um, and that's a year ago. So we've played basically something like eight games of it now. Because mm. what we used to do is play a game of Pandemic Legacy and then record a podcast, but we've kind of got out of that habit now. And obviously, with Steve having moved, it's a bit more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's kind of just sort of sat on the shelf now. Um, but it is it's really good. I mean, I really like Pandemic anyway. I've got it in the couple of expansions. Um, and I really like Pandemic. It's it's a very good, very smooth, very scalable game. It was the first game my kids ever played. <laughs> well, oh, brilliant. Really oh, cool. you got them in on a good one then. Um, in fact, I think Pandemic was probably one of the first games I got after after um, Dead of Winter, actually. Yeah. Thinking just back on, on how I got into all this stuff. But I've, I've since bought a couple of the expansions, so the On the Brink and the In the Lab. Hmm. And there's a couple of mechanics from that in Legacy. Oh, right, but okay. Legacy is just so tense. Um, the last couple of months that uh, we've played, it's honestly we've 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 walked away stressed. It's been just <laughs> <laughs> let's have a nice relaxing a... board game night. <laughs> oh god, it was horrific. <laughs> it just gets to the point now because there's so much happened in the game, and yeah. obviously there's there's so many things that have been been sort of going on and have kept going on <laughs> that um, keeping track of it all is quite difficult. Yeah, although it does obviously make it easy with all the the the, the way you affect the game. Uh, in a permanent manner but I think the last two or three games have literally come down to the last turn that you basically were either going to win the game or we're going to lose it spectacularly and there's there's no there's no middle ground it's just either all in or all dead it's 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 really really good but it's so stressful yeah we all have a tiny, nice calming cup of herbal tea afterwards just to just to <laughs> so settle down. I get set around with some whale music and sit on my yoga cushion <laughs> Yeah, playing sort of little pan pipe. Get into, my, get into my immersion tank and just think that everything is okay. I would. Because <laughs> then you would hear them kind of talking to you. There's a plague. <laughs> I speak well. You, it, it is worth playing, I think. It's definitely I know, worth I, I mean, know, it's come down a lot in price as well. I so know. It's definitely worth getting hold of. I know, and then it's just a case of finding people. Because me and Colin will play it. But then it's the commitment to finding other people to play it as well. I might need to actually persuade my wife to play board oh. games, which... Uh, Does she not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, does she look at you with scorn and hatred? Not exactly. No, no, on no. On no, not kind of, um, not kind of scorn. Um, not kind of, not hatred either. But just oh, a, that's good. Just a kind of, what's the point of that <laughs> kind of thing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, no. Why is that exciting? Explain to me why this is good fun kind of thing. So, But we'll get around there. I'm thinking of potentially kind of like try to build it up. She did, you know, in all fairness, um, me and, and this is completely nothing to do with board games at all, that um, I got, my son um, got Lego Dimensions and... Uh, We've kind of moved from the attitude of you'll not be you'll not be playing that game very very much to me coming home the other day to him <laughs> to the 
the PlayStation 4 being off, and my son proclaiming that him and Mummy just went through a couple of levels and got some gold bricks. And I just looked at him and went, <laughs> Really? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> You've been oh, play- you know, so I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of... Um, it's it's a work. I guess I guess as we would call on the show, it's a work in progress. Work in progress. Kind of yeah, thing, yeah. Just to see, just to see how we get on. But I'm going to try. I think if I say, you know, it's an anniversary up soon. So if I say, do you fancy a game of love letter? She'll probably slack me and go, "You filthy man." <laughs> 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 we just have to see how it goes. Basically, uh, shy burns, then he gets sweet. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> Come here, darling. <laughs> Come here, darling. Give us a cuddle. And it's no my birthday. No, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's, as I say, it's a work in progress. I'm hoping by maybe 2018 that we might have played <laughs> played something. But my danger is, she, my danger is, is that she gets involved in it, becomes very, very good. And then I end up moving away from stuff because it'll be like, I don't want to play this with you anymore because you keep beating me. So we'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah. We shall see. But it's all good. It's all good. And Jake's been playing. Um, Jake's played King of Tokyo, so he's my oh, he's my little boy. Um, so him and his older brother and sister, he rolled the dice while they played King of Tokyo. So he loved that. He thought that Super. was damn good fun, kind of doing that. Yeah. But um, I've heard that's a good a good uh, good game for the. Nippers. It's yeah, it's easy. The King, surprisingly enough, King of New York is a lot more complicated, but King of Tokyo is fan. Fantastic fun, just to kind of mm. the simple kind of um, Yahtzee mechanics. So it's kind of a, it's kind of it's kind of good fun. The only other game that I'm going to mention um, is, and I'm only excited because I am a video game nerd. Thing is Seventh Cross, which is level ninety nine games, um, which is um, which is all about Castlevania. It's a kind of a board game. <gasps> It's by the wow. boys that did Pixel Tactics. Okay, yeah, sure. Now Castlevania, obviously, that's yeah, that's harking back to yeah, uh, yeah my my yeah. Uh, previous video game life. Yeah, that's so, yeah. yeah, that's little boy's cup of joys overflowing. Just knowing that that's <laughs> potentially totally. in the mix, so we'll be we're kind of having a look, but we'll see because things crop up all the time, especially on kind of like your Kickstarter and stuff like that. So we'll be kind of paying attention, but um. I mean, there'll be a couple of places for you good listeners that you can keep an eye on what's happening in the board game world. Now, one of them is to head over to the ramshackled side of the street. (laughs) (laughs) The dark dark side of the street. But this is, I mean, this, I don't know. I mean, this is what I was, mentioned this kind of before about the community. The fact is that you know, we're on different podcasts and I'm like saying, well, come on board. And you say, well, come on board. And it's like, you know, you know, there's no kind of, I'm not having them on because they're a rival. It's like, it's like we record for one hour. (laughs) It's like people have (laughs) got an hour. There's no kind of competition kind of thing. You know, we, you're obviously better than us, but we just, you know, (laughs) we're working hard. I wouldn't go far. I wouldn't go that far. (laughs) I don't know. We're different. I don't know what the next way. level down from Ramshackled is. Do you know what I mean? The slight, slightly just a bit, you know, I don't know, the pasty faced kind of pretender, I guess, but we don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, um, if people want to find you, I guess, is, yeah, I mean, we've mentioned, but where, where can we find you? Uh, you can find us on uh, www.polyhedroncollider.com. Okay. Um, you can find us on Facebook um, at uh, facebook.com forward slash Polyhedron Collider. Yes. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Polyhedron Collider. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Sonic H uh, with a zero, not a what an O, because I'm you know dare to be different. <laughs> and also because Sonic um, H was taken up, wasn't it? Yes, they wouldn't let me have it. <laughs> um, I don't think it was taken. They just, I think Sega must have oh, uh, just right. like dibs on it or something. Just you're not allowed to put um, anything like that just in case you infringe their copyright. Yeah, probably. I suspect that's what it was. Because um, it never said it was taken. It just said, no, nah, you're not having it. <laughs> what? Hang on. <laughs> Move along. Um, <laughs> but, um, and yeah, you can, you, John. John's on Twitter as well at John underscore Cage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can you can find all of us on on the, on the various social media. Uh, we do have a board game geek um, 
what's it called? Is that a clan uh, or a forum or something clan, like that? Yeah, yeah we, we're not. As I say, we're just the level below you, so we haven't even thought about that kind of stuff. I'm still trying to figure out board game geek. <laughs> Oh, it's it's a nightmare. It, it's almost like a, a website of two halves, isn't it? It kind of reads it's so like strange. it kind of reads like really old bad f- uh, fantasy flight instructions. <laughs> it, does, it does. It's so bad. It's like it's just it's like it was designed in the nineteen eighties, oh, just... and then it had an upgrade a few years ago to make it look like it was designed in the nineteen nineties. <laughs> so that's just. And then the latest one looks like they've just picked. It's like pick a skin. It's like from yes. a selection of skins, and they went, "Do we go for the nineteen dollar one or do we go for the fifteen dollar one?" It's like, uh, "Go for the fifteen dollar one." No one will know what it is, 15, yeah. and they've just no, kind exactly. of tackled all of that. I mean, it's but uh, it's a gold mine of information, but finding it is just I find I really find I really struggle navigating. I just it. I just give it. I I even struggle trying to find like our stuff on it. <laughs> I know yeah. you need to. No, do. it's the same for us. Oh, you just need to search. I'm trying to search. You know, we're not, and it's like, no. Do you mean werewolf? No, I don't mean werewolf. I don't mean one night. <laughs> just stop putting me towards that flipping game. You know what? Steve posted um, my Ave Roma review on there. It, was, it must have been last week's own time. So I know it's there. Finding it, it's just a night. I know it's there. It's just, I know it's. I wrote the bloody thing. I know. <laughs> like, I where like, is it? I'd like to submit this, please. No, you can't. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, you just can't. <laughs> so yeah, I think you actually no. need to have a, have a have a bit of a geek. Um, just um, I mean, I really enjoy your show. I enjoy the podcast. I do read your reviews. You put some excellent content out there. If you're listening to us, there's no reason why you can't tune into Polyhedron Collider because they do. They're good people and they do excellent work. Um, thank you for coming on, Andy. I've really um yo, yo, well thank you for having me. It's been good fun. I've really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. And we've learned a little bit more about each other. Yeah, it's always good. <laughs> it's always good. Yeah, fun. we'll we'll have to return the favour. We yeah. Get you on. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if Steve <laughs> Steve will let me on. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll he see, will. We'll, we'll sweet happens. talk him, it's fine. Yeah. But if you want to keep up with what we are doing, then um, we have got our website which is we're not wizards.com or dot co dot uk we have got Twitter, which is We're Not Wizards. We've got Facebook, which is We're Not Wizards. We're on Instagram, which is We're Not Wizards. We have started putting our old podcast episodes on YouTube as well. So if you go to YouTube and you search We're Not Wizards podcast, then you will find the first four episodes up there already. And there's also the latest episode with uh, Matt Jarvis from Tabletop Gaming Magazine as well, who was a fantastic guest and a good... He was a just a top guy to, to speak to. Um, Indeed. There you go. Now, there are a couple of things left to do. The first thing, as always, is to remember that we are many things, but we're not we're wizards. wizards. We're no. Definitely not. No. Two worlds collide. <laughs> two, was it two podcasts <laughs> enter, one podcast leaves? <laughs> Indeed. Like Mar- I think you've got this one. Mad Max. Oh, we'll, see. Money. we'll see. One of three. <laughs> and the um, the second thing is to say goodbye to all you lovely people out there. So it is a goodbye from Andy. And it's a goodbye from Richard. <laughs> Remember, stay safe, roll sixes, and... Uh, it's perfectly acceptable for you to go away and check out other people's podcasts. But until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.